Tonight's special guest is Sir Robert Jones. What baby boomer would not know Sir Robert? Therefore, no explanation needed. Bob is a property investor who writes books. This is number 25. The new book is called Fighting Talk, and it's a collection of boxing terms and how their continual use influences our lives today. Sir Robert has kindly donated three copies for our viewers to win. We welcome Sir Robert Jones as our special guest on The Beat Goes On. It's Sir Robert Jones, wonderful to meet you once again on The Beat Goes On. Thank you, Jerry. You were with us last July. I was indeed. Book after book after book comes pouring from the pen of... Yeah, not so much thinking, but a lot of research went into that. But a great deal of pleasure as well in doing it, of course. Well, I heard about it, and then I read it, and it said 330 common terms in our English language relate directly... Yes, to I just had a letter today, Gerard, from uh, the former editor of the Wangarei paper, pointing out one I'd missed. <laughs> a quite remote one, but he's quite correct nevertheless. The proposition is, why is our news media, our print media, littered with boxing terminology oh, yeah. today? And I explain all that. And I've tried to explain my, my belief of why the writing of fiction's changed and why newspapers have changed over the last 30 years in, in my introduction, and thus why they use boxing terminology every page of the paper. Let's have a look at a few. It's a knockout. Getting into the ring. Supporters in his corner. We don't realise, none of us realise that these Well, if we open the Herald today or the Dominion or anything, we will find every page has it. It's got a and of course an awful term. lot of the things, as you say, a lot of them though that I've identified, I mean, the more basic words like referee and umpire, they come out of boxing. Yeah. Well, I never knew that till I started this research, and they've all got a very interesting explanation. But other terms like upstakes, toddlers, all sorts of things, yeah, double toddlers, whammy, yeah. uh, and, and it, they've all got sort of quite fascinating uh, explanations, as I found out. But it's not just a dictionary mm. of boxing. It's not just an etymological book. You know, a dictionary of boxing terminology and their roots and why and how. It's, a yeah. it's about why they're used now and weren't hitherto, and they weren't. I mean, I sat down and read two years of The Economist, one year in the early 80s and one in the late 70s. Couldn't find it once, whereas you show me today's Economist, or this week's, I should say, I'll find it every third page. Mm. So why has that happened? Well, I explain why it's happened. It's because three big things have happened over the last 25, 30 years. First, the worldwide adoption of the market economy, of democracy and professional sport has suddenly gone haywire, you know, not haywire, but gone crazy. Yes, exactly. And dominated life. America's coming. And, yeah, well, and satellite yeah. television, you see, yeah. in the immediacy of it all. And so taking them one by one, the market economy is a very adversarial system. Before that, we had a very collectivist system, including here in New Zealand. And thus the language of the ring is very good for journalists in describing it. The other thing is that the electronic revolution has meant that newspapers can no longer present the news. They've already, the public have already got it. If World War III broke out, we would read about it in our paper the way, next way morning. Before six now we know yeah. it within seconds. And so well, it's full of commentary. And it's full of commentary about adversarial things, namely business, commerce, politics and sport. A blow-by-blow blow description, below the belt. A politician can hit below the belt. Sure. Anyway. Yes, exactly. Uh, but uh, what, what, what I found fascinating was to actually research the roots of some of these because they had such interesting tales behind them. I mean, where did the word dukes come? Put your dukes up. Yes. Now, that was in an editorial today in the Christchurch Press. Yes, uh, I read about of, that. Yep. Talking about the three Labour candidates hitting town, duking it out. Mm. Uh, in Christchurch. Put your dukes up. Well, that actually comes from the um, the regent, you know, in the early 19th century, who subsequently became king. And he was obsessed with boxing, as were his two ducal brothers. And it was a cockney thing, so they called uh, fist dukes after them. Uh, when he became George IV, or whatever it was, about 1823, he had 24 ushers at his coronation, all prize fighters. <laughs> they were obsessed with it. <laughs> So it's also a social yeah. history. If I had my life over again, that's what I'd love to be, a social historian. I find it very interesting. How much work, Bob, in a book this size? Well, no work. It was mm. just a sheer joy. Seven years yeah. of Seven periodic. years of sheer joy. Yeah, a wet day. I might, have, I might sit down and put five hours into it. Mm. Uh, but I'm a reader. I read a great deal. And, um, you know, I'd be reading something. I'd suddenly think, hang on, that word's obviously coming from boxing. And I'd look up its etymology uh, using the internet. And sure enough, it did. Sometimes they didn't. 
They've also, there's a lot of terms I've left out that probably came from boxing, but I can't be sure. You see, people never hit one another with their fists. People fought with swords, uh, etc., from right through the Dark Ages mm. and right up to the advent of Could resurrection be. of boxing in England for no known reason in the late 17th century. And, of course, it was a vehicle for gambling, which it's not today. Today it's, it's so huge that... Uh, um, the, the money involved is the money paid to the stars. I mean, Mayweather fighting, uh, what's his name, Albert Ray, Mayweather's guaranteed a minimum 43 and a half US million. He's the highest paid sportsman in the world, according to Forbes this year. Mm. He received a quarter of a billion dollars for his last four bouts, which is absurd. And this is a man that can't be hit. <laughs> and, so, and they, in total, um, it took him the time that a fast game of golf would take place. In the next this year listed, I think it was Federer at about $45 million. Identify that one moment when you fell in love with boxing. What, what happened? Was there uh, a lightning <laughs> strike? Was there a... <laughs> I'll tell you what happened. Well, first, I had a mate who came from a boxing family, and the Hutt Valley was where I grew up, was littered with boxing gyms. But it never really occurred to me, albeit that I had jumped over the fence when I was about eight, and at Patoni, when they had a great Australian post war boxer, Dave Sands, fighting one Saturday afternoon. But that, that aside, what happened was my dad um, was a welder, and there was a major, major labour shortage, and wages were very spartan. And he worked literally seven days a week, and he worked in Upper Hart. Uh, and we never saw him except on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night. He was pretty exhausted. When he finally got down to six days a week, I was there with three sisters. My brother Lloyd hadn't been born then. And my mother declared we were churchgoers, which we certainly bloody weren't. And she declared we were Anglicans, which we no more were than we were bloody Buddhists. But anyway, <laughs> and we kicked up such a fuss, we insisted she came, and we all got went on the bus down to the Anglican church. She didn't say anything going home. She said, all right, find something else to do. My poor sisters had to be brownies. She let them off uh, after a month of that torture. And, and of course, boxing uh, was on Sunday mornings up at Taita and Thursday and Tuesday nights. And I went up there. And the moment I walk in, and gosh, you know, I mean, that's 60 years or more again, 62 years ago, I still remember it. I still remember the smells of it, the activity. All these little Irish Catholic kids, a brother supposed to hear apart, I did them. This was a new world for me. I mean, <laughs> and, but the whole ambience. And, and it also something I have to remind myself with all my millions of kids the importance of a father because while my father was a good bloke, he wasn't there of necessity. And to have the old punch drunk boxers there that were training us, you know, and the, the affection and the arm around you and the care and all that. And, it, it was very influential. A for the, Pardon? You felt a father figure for the first time? Or well, I did. I wasn't conscious yeah. of feeling yeah. that, but I certainly was... Uh, 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 I wasn't conscious that they were a father figure, but I was... Mm. I remember once, we were all about 12 or 13, and, and we were joking about singing at school, and dear old Tommy, you know, he'd been a professional boxer, calling us together, you've all got to sing, it's all very important, poetry's important. He couldn't explain why, of course, yeah. but he... <laughs> And we listened to him, whereas if it was our parents, we'd have continued scoffing. Um, but then all kids listen to outsiders. They don't, you know. <laughs> but it, it was a magic world for me. And the other thing about it was that it's quite unique because it does teach you independence. Now, I know that's a bit of a cliche, but you could say, well, it's the one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, this sort of cultivating team sport. Team sport teaches you dependence. And you're on your own. It's a very lonely place yes. in the boxing ring, even though only little yeah. kids with big muffler bike gloves or I'm going around going like that at one another. You, it's still you are on your own. An intense concentration. So it was just a very, very important in my formative years. And, and I developed an affection for it and got greatly involved. That is hugely diminished now. You know, I have other things in my life. I maintained a very detached interest. It's just one of many things that have, I, I, I would never go to a boxing match again. How good did you get? Could you have represented New Zealand as a boxer? Oh, me? No, I was one-armed. I, I, my right arm was broken. It was, I couldn't use it. I had to use my left. So that limited. Did that that did make me very fast. Did that disappoint you that you couldn't um, have a life as a No, boxer? I've got a nasal voice because yeah. of my second last bout in Dunedin <laughs> in 1957. A doctor on the other side of the ring. 
broke my nose, thus my nasal voice, and um, uh, well worthwhile because I won. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, oh, you wear a bit of legacy of these things. No, 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 I had no ambitions like that. Uh, it was something that... That the, was just your hobby. It was one of many hobbies, hobby. but it was, yeah. it was a special one. Yeah. It became quite intense for me in my 30s, and I was in the thick with the at Muhammad Ali camp, I was with them, and so on. But then after that it abated a bit. I wrote this more out of language and my love of journalism. It's not really so much that it's a boxing book, it's about the things that interest me, you know, behaviour, uh, journalism, those sort of things. And that's what it's about and how journalism's changed and why it's now. I mean, well, I use, need, the, I use the economist there as the standard I say in the introduction, and you know, I mean, it's just littered with boxing terminology, and I explain why, whereas why it wasn't once. Now it's available in all good bookstores right throughout the country, as well as bad ones. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> there are bad bookstores. Now, Bob, <laughs> can you afford? Can you afford, Bob, to give three of these books I away to our viewers? I certainly can, and we'd be delighted <laughs> to. We need a, a simple little question, and uh, generally we give the title as the. Um, is the answer to the question, so it's called Fighting Talk. So, okay, well, uh, Beat Goes On us. Email Jared at thebeatgoeson.co.nz. Put Fighting Talk in the subject line. 600, word, 600 yeah. pages. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we will, uh, your name will go into the drawer, and three lucky viewers will win a copy of your new book, Bob. And that's, uh, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Very generous. Before you go, uh, I always like to know what Sir Bob Jones is thinking about some of our subjects here. Um, a first date with a beautiful woman or a heavyweight championship, which, which would you pick? It depends on the heavyweight champion. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's some that uh, I don't particularly want to be with. I learnt not to hero worship a long time ago. Um, probably opt for the girl. You'd go for the beautiful mm. woman. Labour leadership. I don't know, Cunliffe, but I really make the observation. It's no secret. It's, it's, you know, everybody knows that that the press gallery and his own caucus, people who deal with him every day, can't stand Cunliffe. They just can't stand him. There has to be a reason for that. Sooner or later, as we've read, the public find out. So I'm simply... Whereas the complete opposite with Grant. Everybody loves Grant. Now, they're all, all three of them... Shane, Shane Jones is never going to be leader of the party for obvious reasons. Cunliffe, with this sort of silly old-fashioned Douglas, you know, is an evil bugger and that. He, Douglas is the most accomplished politician this mm. country has ever seen for what he achieved yeah, and he, did. He did marvellously. And thing. they should be grateful. But they always say that in opposition and they ignore it when they're in government and they get sensible. But I would go with Grant on the grounds I said. Now, to finish, we're way over time, but it's such an wonderful to have Sir Robert Jones in the studio. Uh, what's the next thing on your bucket list? like to write a comedic novel. That's the thing I like most of all. I've done four comic novels where I make a serious point. That's where I get great pleasure. Oh, wonderful. So, uh, can I book you in now? Come on the show to uh, talk Got to write. First, catch your hair. Now, who said that? In other words, wait till I write. Sir Robert, thank you once again. Thank Welcome you very soon. much. Thank you, Bob. Coming up next on The Beat Goes On is John Hammond.